Hi everyone, I'm Elisa and we're back. We are talking about the circulatory system right now and in particular blood in little 10 minute increments. And so for part eight, we're talking about red blood cell production again, cause it's a really long topic. All right, let's get started. So we talked already about how we need certain types of uh, vitamins and minerals to become, um, to be able to produce these red blood cells. Some of those key ones being vitamin B12, folic acid, um, because we have to make them very quickly. Um, also vitamin C and copper, because those enzymes are going to be important for making those hemoglobin molecules, which are going to hold the uh, iron in the seat for transport of oxygen. And um, I just kind of wanted to recap a little bit with a, a visual, right? So we talked about um, bioavailable um, iron, right? So when you eat iron, for example, from your, you know, salads and all this other stuff that you're eating, hamburgers even, um, you have it in two forms, right? So ferrous, ferric, and it depends on like basically the charge of the cation. And what we want is this one right here, which is a two plus. Um, so, oops, sorry. I was just, I just touched the screen. And so luckily the stomach, uh, gastroferritin is going to be able to, I'm not, I'm sorry, not gastro, the stomach's acid is going to be able to convert, um, the charge value down just a bit, neutralizing it. And then gastroferritin is going to bind to it. As you can see here, it's like the green kind of ball right there. It's green to the purple, which is the iron. So it binds to the iron and it takes it to the small intestine where we can actually absorb it and it goes into the bloodstream. And like once it's in the bloodstream, we're in business, we can start transporting it around the body for manufacture. And it goes into a few places. Like it goes into, um, well, uh, you know, it goes to the blood plasma. And so one of the places that we'll look at a lot is it goes to the marrow, right? Where it gets directly, um, placed into the heme groups. Some of it is going, once it's in the blood plasma, it's going to bind to transferrin, transporting it. For example, if there's a transferrin, it's the little like squares, right? And it's binding to the iron in the blood plasma. So that's going to help just kind of transport that through the blood plasma, neutralizing it for its journey. Um, however, in the liver is going to pull a little bit off, as you can see here, and it's going to bind it to what we call apoferritin, apo meaning kind of like a lipid type storage. So apoferritin is going to be able to be bound together, making ferritin. Uh, and so that's a storage molecule or it's a storage, you know, compound, I guess, and molecule. Um, Right. And so other places, so it doesn't just go into the hemoglobin. It also goes into the myoglobin, which is something you would find in the muscles proper. Like anytime you see myo, think muscle. Okay. So hypoxemia. So anytime you see like hypoxic, right? Like hypo, it means like not enough, right? Here, let's see. Boop, boop, boop. My pen back. Okay. Hypo, it means like low, right? And so like a hypoxic state means like a low oxygen, right? Low and then oxygen state. Okay, so that's technically a form of anemia also. But um, mainly you're worried that the tissues are, um, you know, not able to continue metabolism, oxygen-based metabolism. And uh, so this increases your erythropoiesis through this really cool control system. So your kidneys, right, are kind of this really old organ. And so they're always getting uh, blood in and then they, you know, clean it up and then they, you know, push it back out. But urine is also going to drop through, right? So they're filtering everything down at like the plasma level. So it's very sensitive. And so one of the things it can sense is how much oxygen is the blood actually carrying, right? And so if it's not carrying enough, right, it's, oh, here, let's go back. If it's not carrying enough and it says like, oh, no, there's not enough oxygen in that blood. I better like send out some erythropoietin, right? Erythropoietin is going to help increase uh, the bone marrow's production of RBCs. It says like make more RBCs. Please. 
right? So that's what erythropoietin does. And so that stimulates the bone marrow to increase its like ability to make all these red blood cells. And so, uh, get, you know, after you get the release of erythropoietin, it still takes a while, right? Remember, they take three to five days to manufacture. And so the count starts being visible, like in a clinical setting where you can actually measure it um, in about three to four days. So things that can cause someone to have to make more red blood cells are varied. There's a few. So one, straight up blood loss, right? So um, wounds, uh, be they internal or external, loss of, of circulating red blood cells, right? So this is internal bleeding can even cause this, right? Um, high altitude can also cause this, right? Just not enough oxygen in the air that the individual is breathing, right? Um, also increased exercise, right? Huffing and puffing. Oh, I need a little more oxygen, your your body gets into gear. It starts really pumping out those red blood cells. And also some interesting, you know, if it's a lot of cardio, can get some more valves in those veins, which you really want. That's very helpful. We'll get into that in the future, though. Um, also can be uh, degenerative states due either to natural causes or also to um, environmental, such as emphysema from possibly smoking, for example, like just loss of lung tissue, right? Um, so here's kind of how the feedback look, loop looks, okay? So um, it's sensed by liver and kidneys, kidneys specifically. So we're secreting, secreting, secreting. That's not a word. I guess it is now. Anyway, so secreting erythropoietin. And it's going to go hit the bone marrow. And we're going to increase erythropoiesis. And then we're going to get some more red blood cells. And well, now we got enough oxygen. And now uh, we don't have to secrete as much erythropoietin. Right? And so that's how the loop essentially works. Okay. So erythrocytes, as you know, don't have a nucleus. Right? So they, like, cannot live too long. They are going to get kind of broken and battered and bruised and... You know, it's, they're not going to be able to repair themselves. So they have a really short life, if you remember, like maybe about 120 days. Okay, because they can't repair themselves. And so it means that we need to have this like death and disposal uh, cycle. So we're going to look at that. So when we have RBC rupture, okay, or um, what we call hemo hemolysis or hemolysis, hemo like blood, and then lysis meaning to break or to burst open, right? That's lysis um, or breakdown generally. It can be caused by a number of things, right? So um, essentially the spleen and the liver are going to be the key filtering organs in that process, right? So we have macrophages in the spleen. And so what they're going to do is they're going to kind of chew it up, digest it a little bit. Remember, they're macrophages, so they're going to eat some stuff and they're macro, so they're large. Um, when they digest them down, they're going to separate hemes from the globins. And some of it can be recycled a little bit. So we can um, turn some globins into just break them down to individual amino acids and kind of feed them back into other types of anab. Um, anabolism. Um, the iron is removed from the heme group itself. Um, the heme is a, a pigment because of the iron itself. Um, it's not really intended to be, you know, just reddish. It's more of a byproduct. So that's anything that does cause a color change or color observationally is we refer to that as a pigment. So, you know, just so you know, it's not like they went to the store and picked out what crayon they wanted to use for blood. It's just, you know, kind of one of those. So um, the heme starts being degraded and we can, in that degradatory process, um, it becomes um, biliveridin, which is a greenish color um, and which is further converted down to bilirubin, yellow. So when you see an individual that has, um, say, a lot of like jaundice, right? So lots of yellow, yellow in their eyes, yellow in the plasma, and they're very tired and whatnot. You know that they're undergoing lots and lots of um, hemolysis, right? So they're losing lots of red blood cells really fast. Um, so all of that is released into the blood plasma. The kidneys, this is partially the color, you know, one of the reasons we have this like yellow urine. Um, the litherer also removes bilirubin and is able to use some of it in bile, actually, another yellowish substance in the body. So it's nice recycling for you. Uh, generally, that is later on, we'll talk about this more in digestive, but just so you know, it's it's like 
it's concentrated in the gallbladder and all this other stuff. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit into digestive. So the life and death of the erythrocyte, right? So the life begins like when all of the components, the amino acid and the iron and all of the building blocks are absorbed in the small intestine. They are transported in many fashions to uh, the bone marrow, to the red bone marrow. I usually like to use a femur for these images, but they like to use the pelvis. But anyway, um, for your erythropoiesis in the marrow, um, they're going to circulate in the circulatory system. Here's the heart to represent the circulation, right? Um, for a couple months. And then after a few months, they're just really like, you know, they're broken down and they're like damaged and they got problems. And so we start to break them down. We're going to take them to the main filtering organs. So uh, the spleen and, and the liver themselves. So, ooh, sorry, the spleen, red blood cell graveyard, RBC graveyard. And uh, we're going to degrade it into its parts again. So it gets degraded all the way back down to amino acids and uh, a couple of other components that we're going to recycle in the digestive system as well as other irons as well, right? So some of us we can reuse and some of them will just circulate until it's excreted. All right. And that is the red blood cell for you.